Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you James Stewart and Marsha Hunt in Made for Each Other. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Most stories of romance and marriage end with a phrase, and they lived happily ever after. Uh, just how it's accomplished is left to one's imagination. But our drama tonight from the screen hit made for each other starts where others leave off and tells the best part of the story. What happens in the marriage of two lovable and average Americans? For those lovable Americans, we have two amiable and more than average stars. Jimmy Stewart and Marsha Hunt, a promising combination to usher in the holiday season. Apart from romance, the title Made for Each Other suggests many things, from apple pie and cheese to California and sunshine, or should I say Florida and sunshine. And to thousands of women, I am sure that it suggests fine fabrics and luxe flakes. A letter from one of our listeners reminds me of a previous Monday night when I referred to Lux Flakes overseas as literally worth its weight in gold. She politely reminds me that when it comes to laundering precious fabrics, Lux is worth its weight in gold at home, too. And figuratively, at least, I am sure she's right. Fine fabrics and Lux Flakes are most assuredly made for each other. Here's the first act of our play, starring Jimmy Stewart and Marsha Hunt as Johnny and Jane Mason. High in a New York skyscraper is the law firm of Doolittle, Doolittle, Smiley, and Hutch. Dignity is definitely the keynote of their impressive office. But on this spring morning, dignity is lacking in the extreme. For the whole staff is gathered in the reception room, each co-worker well supplied with rice and old shoes. Suddenly the door swings open and the office boy dashes in. Hey, he's coming, Johnny Mason. Do you see him? Sure, I saw him. He's on the elevator. Get the shoes ready. Sure. Where's my ride? Quiet. Shh. Here he comes. Hello, kids. Hey, what's everybody looking at? A fine trick you pull on us, Johnny Mason. What are you talking about? Hello, Johnny Mason. Hello, Johnny Mason. Thanks, thanks. Now, wait a second. Wait, wait a second, can't you? Now, wait a second. Guys, can't a fella get married? It isn't unusual, is it? Or is it? <laughs> Mason! Mason! Just because a guy happens to go off... Mason! Oh, hello. Good morning, Judge Doolittle. Come into my office. Yes, sir. I was just on my way. Never mind. Come in and close the door. Yes, sir. What was all that racket out there? Well, they somehow found out that while I was up in Boston... get the deposition in the case of Higgins against Higgins? Yes, sir. Here it is. Let me see it. Go on, go on. What about the uproar? Well, after I got the deposition, I had a few hours to spare. What kind of nonsense is this? This isn't the deposition. It isn't? No. It says, to the party of the first part, I love you, signed party of the second part. Oh, oh, that's the wrong paper. That's a note from Jane, my wife. Your what? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I I got married. You got married? It all happened just as suddenly as that. I was walking on the common up in Boston, and she had a cinder in her eye. A what? A cinder. A piece of uh, uh, cinder. And... uh, (laughs) She stopped, and I stopped, and that's when I took the cinder out of her eye. And that's when you married her? That's right. Oh, I got the deposition first. That took two days. I see. Pretty quick, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I imagine Eunice will be rather surprised at this. Your daughter? Oh, she can't be any more surprised than I am. Hey, uh, Judge Doolittle, uh, you know, when people get married, they usually go on a honeymoon. Nonsense. Honeymoons are a waste of time. Yes, sir. But you know how women are, and uh, if it wouldn't inconvenience you... How about Higgins against Higgins? It'll inconvenience them, won't it? No, sir. That is, if you'll pardon me, I've arranged a continuance with the opposing counsel. A continuance, eh? All right, Mason, take a week. A week? Oh, well, I'm afraid I couldn't very well make it in a week. You see, we were going to Bermuda. Ten days, then? Well, we were sort of hoping for a month. A month? Four weeks? Yes, sir. You see, Jane's waiting out in the car for me, and I told her... 
We could probably stay down there for a few Now, days. see here, Mason. Higgins against Higgins is much more important than Bermuda. You'll see all that's necessary in ten days. It's a very small island. But, uh, ten days, Judge Dula. Ten days. Well, go on, Johnny. Go on. Oh, the boss was swell, Jane. I, I showed him your picture. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. Oh, Johnny. Yeah. He was marvelous. I couldn't congratulate me enough. Well, then you didn't have any trouble about the month off. Oh, well, no. Uh, not what you'd call trouble. The only thing is that... Uh, go on. Well, I uh, didn't exactly get a month. Oh? No, of course, if I'd insisted, I... Darling, how long did you get? Well, I compromised on ten days. Ten days, Johnny. Yeah, but now I have it all planned, darling. And the boat takes two days to get there and two days to get back. That's a whole six days, what happened. A whole six days. I know, darling, but old Granite Pussy just doesn't believe in honeymoons. It's not bad, though, you know. After all, it'll help with my mother. What'll help with your mother? Well, we won't have to leave her for such a long time. Oh. oh when you phoned her this morning, what did she say? Oh, she was fine, fine. You told her about me and getting married and all? Uh, well, I sort of broke the ice, yeah. Johnny, how much ice did you break? Well, I told her that while I was up in Boston, I ran into several people. Didn't you tell her about me at all? Well, I, I kind of thought it'd be fun to surprise her, you know. <laughs> surprise? Johnny, I think you'd better see your mother by yourself. Oh, no, no, Jane, no. I should say not. I have the whole thing planned, move by move. Now, look. We'll start at the beginning. Now, I'll tell her that while I was walking on the common, I met you. And so, Mother, after I got the sender out of Jane's eye, we walked along together. How interesting, I'm sure. Uh, would you have some more tea, Miss... Uh, I uh, didn't catch your last name. I don't think Johnny mentioned it. I will have some tea. Thank you. Yes, John. Go on, dear. And uh, then we kept walking some more. And then we uh, had a bright tea. To... Yes, go on. We had a bite to eat, and, uh, and I, I told her I was crazy about her. What did you say? <laughs> we were just as surprised as you are, Mrs. Mason. Yeah, it was love right after the cinder came out. <laughs> oh, dear, you... You know, Miss, uh... My name is Jane. Oh, yes, of course, Jane. John, so young and impulsive. Now, Mother, this is different. Uh, Jane, is... my dear, are you visiting relatives here? Well, yes and no. You see, I came down with Johnny. From Boston? Um, together? Last night? Oh, you see, Mother, we thought that since we were engaged... We... Engaged? But, but what did your family say about it? I have no family. I was going to night school, taking a course in journalism. Now, and... She gave it up when she met me. I'm sort of a postgraduate course. <laughs> <laughs> My dear, if you have any opportunity for a career, by all means, follow it through. Oh, but don't you think marriage is a career in itself? Oh, indeed, but uh, one shouldn't rush into it pell-mell. There are too many things to learn. Well, Jane will learn them after we're married. Don't worry, Mother. I hope and pray that day won't come for many years. Oh. You, uh, you don't think we should get married? Emphatically not. Uh, please understand, I have nothing against Jane. I'm sure she's a lovely girl. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm... Glad of that, Mother, because, uh, you see, you, you know, uh, when she asked if she, you asked if she was visiting relatives, well, as a matter of fact, she's visiting one right now. She, uh, she, uh, Mother, we... We're married, Mrs. Mason. Oh. Oh, Mother, now, people get married sooner or later and go on honeymoons, and when we come back, we'll find a new apartment, and you can stay with us. Jane insists on mm -hmm. it. And then we'll have a little family. A family? Oh, Johnny, she's fainted. Oh, sure, let's go on your shore. Oh, sure. Well, it's time for me to leave, I suppose. Oh, guys, don't look so sad, Mother. We'll be home in ten days. I know. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Mason. And don't let him have too many strawberries. And see that he wears a hat in the sun. <laughs> I will. Now, take it easy, Mother. He almost had a sunstroke once. Oh. That was 14 years ago. And, and if he gets seasick, don't forget the pills I gave you. Oh, and, and take care of yourself, too. Thank you. Goodbye, Mrs. Mason. Come on, we'll wave to you from the rail. No, you stay here. I couldn't stand to see the boat leave with you on it, John. Goodbye. So long, Mother. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care of him. He's my only son. I will. Hey, 
Funny things, Mother. Let's go in the stateroom, huh? Come on, let's unpack. We've got lots to do, darling. No, no, let's just sit here and think. You know? All right. You know, this is the first time in my life I've been away from America. Me too, Johnny. Hey, Jenny. What? Hey, do you remember when I took that cinder out of your eye? How could I forget? You know, I threw it away. Oh. I, I should have kept it. If, it. if it weren't for that cinder, maybe we'd never met. Oh, Johnny, don't say that. We had to meet. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I hadn't been for that cinder, though. You know? Oh, Johnny, isn't everything just beautiful? Hey. Hey, that's us. We'll pull out pretty soon. Bon voyage, darling. Bon voyage, sweetheart. What's that? I don't know. Go see. Come in. Hello, Mason. Just caught you in time. Well, Carter, well, nice of you to come down. Jane, this is Mr. Carter of the office. How do you do? Mrs. Mason, well, a good thing I got here. You've got just five minutes to get off the boat. Get off the boat. Oh, don't mind him, dear. He has a funny sense of humor, yes. Uh -huh. Doolittle hasn't. He wants you back in the office right away. What are you talking about? Higgins against Higgins. Well, what about Higgins against Higgins? Higgins against Higgins goes on the calendar next week. Johnny, they can't. Oh, Carter, no. Now, I got a continuance for a whole month. Except the other attorney didn't sign it. Judge Doolittle had the case reset for this week. Well, what does that granite push think I am? A puppet? Some kind of a pawn he can push around like a... Like a pawn? Like a uh, pawn? It's out yeah. of the question. Is that what you want me to tell Judge Doolittle? Yes. Well, now, uh, Jane, will you excuse him a minute, Carter? Certainly, but you'd better hurry. That's telling them, Johnny. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> sure, Jane, but uh, look, now, I mustn't be too impulsive like Mother says. You know, Higgins against Higgins, my most important case. Not as important as our honeymoon, dear. No, no, of course not, darling, but uh, I don't want to lose my head. Now, you see, darling, uh, a lawyer is a little like a... Uh, Doctor or a soldier, you, you see? You're not giving in to them. Well, no, no, not exactly. But uh, maybe we could go on the honeymoon after the case is settled. I, I could turn the tickets in now. Oh, we... no, Johnny. But Judge Doolittle said that... I hate Judge Doolittle. Shh, shh, darling, and I hate Higgins against Higgins. But I, I can't... And it... that nasty little man out there, Carter, I hate him. I know, you probably hate me, too. <laughs> oh, Johnny. And it would have been so beautiful... Hello? Anybody home? Johnny, I've been worried to death. Yeah, I got tied up in court. I didn't know whether I'd get home in time for the party or not. Well, did you bring the wine for the dinner? Sure, you see, old Granite Puss's favorite brand. Oh, well, hurry, darling. They'll be here any minute. Well, I, all I gotta do is shave and change my shirt. But don't use the guest towels. Yours is on the second rack. Okay, how's it been going? Oh, everything's just lovely. An ultimatum from Annie. She's quitting tonight. Tonight? That's all right, though. She'll see us through dinner. Fine. Well, what are we having for dinner? Roast beef. Say, that was certainly a brilliant idea of yours, inviting Eunice Doolittle at the last minute. Well, she's the judge's daughter, isn't she? What could I do? And that impossible twerp Carter. Well, Eunice had some sort of a date with him. I had to ask. You know, I've always had an idea he had something to do with canceling our honeymoon. It's going to be different when my name moves up in the door. Doolittle, Doolittle, Smiley, Hutch, and Mason. Oh, Johnny, really? Practically up there now. I won the appeal in Higgins against Higgins. Oh, you're marvelous, darling. Huh. Hey, you're all dressed. Uh-huh. Well, except for this. Hook me up, darling. Where? Where to hook you? Oh, those hooks in the back. Oh, well, pretty nice neck you got there, you know? <laughs> As nice as Eunice Doolittle's. Well, what do I know about Eunice Doolittle's neck? I mm. never even noticed she had a neck. Mm. <laughs> there, I think I got them all down. I was all hooked up. Thanks, dear. Now run out and see how Annie's doing in the kitchen, huh? Okay. Oh, and hurry, Johnny. Jean, your guests are here, my dear. Oh, uh, good evening, Judge Doolittle. Well, 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 good evening, Mrs. Mason. This is my daughter, Eunice. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Mason? You know, Mr. Carter? Oh, yes, we've met. Uh, we're a little early, I'm afraid. Oh, no, not at all. It's just 8 o'clock. Johnny should be. Jane! Uh, yes, dear? You know, I was just thinking, I'll bet old Granite Puss will be late. He's uh, always here. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Good evening, Mason. Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, good evening, Judge. I, I, uh, I have uh, great news for you, Judge. We're having ro roast beef tonight, isn't it? Miss Mason, dinner's ready. Do you want it now, or will you eat it cold? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, shall we sit down? <laughs> Annie, you may serve the dessert, please. That's what I'm doing, ain't I? But, Annie, this isn't the ice cream. Maybe it don't look like it, but that's what it is. But what happened to it? Somebody defrosted the icebox. No, oh, it's a little accident, folks. I it looks say. just delicious, Mrs. Mason. Annie, the wafers. What's wafers? Crackers. Oh, crackers. Couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> Judge Doolittle, Johnny tells me you've won the appeal in the Higgins against Higgins case. Yes, at last. <laughs> Is it true, Judge Doolittle, that something's going to happen in the firm next week? Oh, yes. We're appointing a junior partner. And what? Daddy's consulted with me. Quite a job to pick the right man. I shouldn't think so. Surely if it's a question of merit, John... <clears throat> As a rule, I always trust my own judgment, but there's nothing like a woman's intuition. That's why Daddy consulted me. And the new partner will be... Beginning next Monday, the new name of the firm will be Doolittle. I, of course, will head it as I have for the past 25 years. And very capably. <laughs> Smiley. Oh, naturally. Doolittle, my brother. Oh, do hurry, Daddy. Hutch. And? And Carter. Oh, Congratulations, Carter. Son. Thank you, Judge well, Doolittle. That's, Thank you. That's nice. Uh, well, Carter, uh, congratulations. Look, I, I'd like to propose a toast... Uh, a uh, toast to the new partner. Well, well I... Uh... <laughs> oh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. We seem to have run out of wine. I'm sorry. Will you give me the dishes, Mother? Just hand them over. Uh, careful, son. Somebody left their peas. It was Judge Doolittle. John. The gravy sure sticks on this stuff. I didn't want to say anything, but... You must admit now that if you hadn't rushed into this marriage, there'd have been no question about the partnership. Well, what do you mean, Mother? If you'd have married Eunice Doolittle, and you could have, you'd have been in Mr. Carter's place. Jane's got more on her little finger than Eunice Doolittle will ever have if she lives to be 900. But, son, Jane is... And, uh, Mother, uh... Mother, now, there's something else. I don't like to mention it, but it isn't any too easy for Jane, all of us living here like this. I wish you'd try and understand. But I only had your good in mind when I mentioned the partnership. My partnership with Jane's all the partnership I need. Me too, Johnny. That's all I need. Must you eavesdrop? Oh, she wasn't, Mother. You're both siding against oh, me. Oh, now, Mother, I don't think we are. I've got all I can bear. Don't add any more. We're not trying to. I the dinner was want... the most humiliating experience of my life. Of course it was for us, too. Not me. I don't care what they think. And I'll be blamed for it. That's all the consideration I get around here. Consideration? You don't need the consideration. Jane. Janie, darling. Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry, Johnny. I, I didn't want to do that, but oh, it's just me, I guess. Well, don't worry, Janie. I, someday, someday I'll have a partnership of my own. And my own office and my own practice and my own firm. Oh, sure, that's right. And I know a swell name for it. Mason against, I mean, Mason and... Mason. Yeah, Mason and Ma... Uh, huh? Oh. You mean, uh, you mean father and son? Doctors can be wrong, you know, but our doctor thinks there'll be another lawyer in the family pretty soon. Oh, you mean... You mean then, then you and me are... Uh, I mean, you're... A baby lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> and I want him just like you. Well, well, Jane, congratulations. <laughs> We'll return with Act Two of Made for Each Other, starring Jimmy Stewart and Marsha Hunt, in just a moment. Most people get a thrill out of being able to say when they see a famous star, Oh, yes, I knew her when she was a model, or uh, I had a date with her in high school. Tonight we have as our guest a, a young lady on the threshold of her screen career. So one of these days you may be saying, Why, I heard her on the Lux Radio Theater. 
She's Miss Jane Nye. Oh, goodness, Mr. Keeley, you make me feel as self-conscious as when I had to recite in front of the boys in high school. But I hear you took your screen test for 20th Century Fox very calmly, Jane. Oh, honestly, I did have the jitters, but I'm learning how to camouflage them. You certainly are. You play your role in State Fair like a veteran. Well, Jean Crane and Dana Andrews are grand people to work with, and I still pinch myself at my good luck. Perhaps your blonde hair and dancing blue eyes help Lady Luck along. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. That helps to make up for missing some of the fun in the picture. What do you mean? Well, everybody else goes to the state fair, but I stay home. However, at the fair, they get splashed by some rambunctious pigs. Well, I'm sure that Lux took care of that in no time, eh, John? I know that 20th Century Fox, like other leading Hollywood studios, depends on Lux for all their washable costumes. One of the wardrobe girls told me that, too. I wear a darling pink cotton dress in a picture, and it was luxed every time I wore it. Lux care is especially important in technicolor pictures because any fading would be noticeable on the screen. Well, that dress stayed the most luscious color all the time. Uh, is pink your favorite color, Jane? <laughs> Almost, Mr. Kennedy. I like pastels especially, but not washed out ones. That's why thousands of women lux all their nice colored rayon and cotton dresses, blouses, and sweaters. Tests prove that colors stay lovely up to three times as long with gentle lux care. Strong soap, hot water, and rough handling can make fabric soon look faded and drab. You can depend on this promise. Anything safe in water is safe in Lux. Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on Act Two of Made for Each Other, starring Jimmy Stewart as Johnny and Marsha Hunt as Jane. The standard witticism of maternity nurses is the doubtfully humorous remark, we've never lost a father yet. But Johnny Mason, like many fathers before him, is not so easily convinced. His knees are shaking, his face is contorted with terror as he awaits the advent of his future law partner. Nobody looks at him, nobody speaks to him. Johnny Mason is a lone and lonely man in a woman's world. Hey, nurse. Hey, speak to me, nurse. <laughs> nurse, speak to me, will you please? Yes. Look. Look, tell me, how about it now? Hmm? About how about what? About my baby. My baby. Uh, oh, oh, you want to know if he's arrived yet? Uh, sort of the general idea, yeah, if you don't mind. Well, it won't be long. And remember, we've never lost a father yet. Hey, nurse. Hey. It, it, is that him? Is that my baby? No, and don't you come another step closer. Well, if he's my baby, I'll Please, see. this is not your baby. Well, when's my baby coming? Now, don't worry. We've never lost, lost a father. father yet. I know, I know. But you better be careful this time, that's all. You'll just have to be patient. Nice. Right. Be patient. Have you ever been a father? Nice. I'll die on my feet if I don't just... Hey, hey, doctor. How about my baby? Young man, I am not your doctor. You aren't, huh? Well, do I have a doctor? Why doesn't somebody speak to me around here? Why doesn't somebody tell me something? Gosh, I stand or they won't even look at me. It's a fine thing. Please, are you Mr. Mason? What? Who, me? Yeah, yeah. I've been standing around here. What's that? This is your baby, Mr. Mason. That's my, my, my girl? Or, or... It's a boy. It's and Jane. Jane, how's Oh, Jane? she's fine. Mr. Mason, aren't you a little pale? Who, me? No, I, I'm all right. I, I never... Uh... <laughs> intern, intern, a stretcher, please. All the trouble again. It's a touch of colic. I know. No, Mother, he's just hungry. I'm sorry, my dear, it's colic. He's cried for five minutes. Johnny, where's that bottle? Coming, dear. Here you are, fella, just warmed up right. Hey, hey, look, he's smiling at me. That's gas. Oh. <laughs> Give me that bottle, Johnny, you answer the door. Well, whoever it is, I'll tell him we're not here. Well, at least he stopped crying. You see, he was hungry. If he was fed on time, he wouldn't cry. I know, Mother, but the bottle wasn't warm enough. Why wasn't it? I won't say anything. I won't say anything. What's that, dear? Nothing, Mother. Who was it, Johnny? Oh, it's the mailman. A present for the baby from old Granite Push. Well, how thoughtful. I'll bet it's a summons. Hey. Hey, look, it's, it's a bank book. Well, the old darling. How much? 
Oh, ten bucks. Ten dollars. I hope it doesn't plunge Doolittle into bankruptcy. I think it's very considerate of Judge Doolittle to think of the baby's future. Well, it isn't much, but gosh, it's a start, isn't it? Why, of course. That's the proper spirit, John. Oh, it isn't that. Johnny, come in here, please, in the bedroom. Will you watch the baby, Mother? That's what I'm doing. He'd choke if it wasn't for me. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? What's the idea? Johnny, how long are you going to stand for it? Stand for what? Judge Doolittle's contempt for you, his intense unappreciation of your work. Well, what's that got to do with the ten dollars? It isn't the ten dollars. It's what it means. He holds you at just that much. Oh, I suppose so. The ten dollars from anyone else would be swell. But not from Doolittle. You do all the work in that office and Doolittle knows it. Yeah, I know. The bills are piling up and Christmas is coming and... Well, the income just doesn't match the outgo. I guess. And still you let Doolittle take advantage of you. You deserve a raise. Why don't you tell him that? Oh, I'd lose my job. You won't lose your job. You're too valuable. If you left, Doolittle would come crawling, begging you to come back. Crawling, huh? No, you don't know old granite push. All you've got to do is speak up. Don't ask for your rights. Demand them. What are you, a man or a mouse? I'm a mouse. <laughs> You're not either. You're too modest. You don't appreciate yourself, honey. You're not having the things you should have. Well, neither are you. You remember when I got you that wedding ring? Later, I was going to get you a big one with the diamonds and a mink coat. I, I want them, Johnny. And I want a honeymoon in Bermuda and an apartment large enough so the baby doesn't have to sleep in the dining room. You can get them for me if you get what's coming to you. Well, if I only had to, knew how to go about it. I'll tell you how. You just walk in and say, Judge Doolittle, there's something I've got to say to you right now. What will he say? Well, he'll say, sit down, Mason. What is it? And you'll say, Judge Doolittle... I've been working for you for five years. I've given you all that's in me, every ounce. Yeah, and then, then he'll... No, he'll wait, be... no, no. He'll say, there's no doubt about that, Mason. Uh, and I'll say... All right, Judge Doolittle, what are you going to do about it? I hate to think of what'll happen then. <laughs> no matter what he says, you say, either a raise and a junior partnership, or accept my resignation effective immediately. Effective immediately? Mm hmm Effective immediately. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it some of these days. Johnny, some of these days is tomorrow. Well, yeah, but how can I... I, I can't... I can't do it. You tomorrow. walk into his office. You say, Judge Doolittle, I've got something to say to you right now. Say it. Oh. Judge Doolittle, I, I've got something to say to you right now. Either I get a raise and a junior partnership or else... Judge Doolittle... I've got something to say to you right now. Either I get a raise in a junior partnership... Mason, what in the world are you doing? Oh, me? Well, I, I was just rehearsing. Rehearsing? Well, yes, it's very important, sir. I... It's more important you answer your buzzer. Oh, Come sorry. in here. I'm sorry. I guess I must have been busy rehearsing. Sit down. Yes, sir. Mason, you've been doing mighty good work lately. Well... Thank you, Judge. You've been just... capable, loyal, right from the start. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Judge. But these are I... extraordinary times for all of us. Oh, they are. Yes, sir. Some of our oh. biggest clients are affected. Oh, yeah? Most of them claim it's all they can do to stay in business. They do, huh? So they're cutting expenses right and left. And we're the first to feel it. Naturally, we have to do something about it. Judge Doolittle, there's something oh, I have to say to you, right? Oh, it's tighten our belts. I'm asking everyone to take a 25% cut in salary. Oh, but Judge Doolittle... No, I... I'm glad you understand, Mason. It warms my heart to see such a splendid spirit of cooperation in one of my men. Thank you, sir. Yes. By the way, Mason, please answer the buzzer next time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll... Johnny Mason, your wife's on the phone. My wife? Well, tell her, tell her I won't be home. I, I, I mean, tell her I won't be home till late. <laughs> Johnny? Johnny, is that you? Yes, it is! <laughs> the great John H. Mason, big shot lawyer. Uh, good morning, Johnny. Good morning. How do you feel? I feel fine, fine. Oh, well, what time is it? What time is it? Four o'clock, five o'clock, high noon? Oh, it's just three, isn't it? 
Well, if you knew what time it was, why did you ask me what time it was? What difference does it make anyway what time it is? I feel fine. Uh, you'd better go to bed, Johnny. Well, must I be told like a child? To... Sure, all right. I'll go to bed. Are you going to sleep? Yes, I, well, I'm in bed, of course. I'm going to sleep. But do you think you'll be comfortable? Of course I'll be comfortable. 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 Don't you think you'd be more comfortable if you took off your hat? Uh, well, maybe it would. Can I help? No, I, I don't need any help. What are you looking so funny about? Uh, better go to sleep, dear. And you'd think I was on the witness stand or something. A man comes home looking for a little peace and quiet, and what happens? Why didn't I phone you? Why didn't I come home for supper? A million questions fired at, at a fella. I ran into Doolittle this afternoon... I was out for a walk with a baby. He was in the park. All right. Let me have it. Tell me what you really think of me. Tell me I'm a failure, a weakling. Tell me I'm... Oh, oh, Jane, I... Oh, Johnny, you fool. (laughs) What does it matter if you get a raise or a partnership or or anything? I'll let you down, Janie. I'm... I'll always let you down. Johnny, I'm, don't I'm no say good. that. I'm no good. It was my fault for interfering. I'll never do it again, never. We've got each other. You're all I have and all I want. And, and please, if you feel bad, I'll die. Oh, Jane, I, 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 I don't... Oh, Johnny, look at me and tell me you don't feel bad. Jane, I, I don't feel bad. I feel fine. <laughs> Honest, I do. Oh, Johnny... The next time you go out and get plastered, you better take me along with you or I'll, I'll get a divorce. You better get a good lawyer. <laughs> I've got a good lawyer. Johnny, will you close that window, please? You know I have a cold. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I just wanted to hear the crowd. It looks like a big New Year's. Yes, for some folks. How's the baby, Jane? I just looked at him. He has the sniffles. All babies have sniffles this time of the year. He caught it from you, Mother. Me? That's simply ridiculous. He's had sniffles all day. When I took his temperature... That's when he caught your cold. He certainly didn't. He had no temperature. It's all right, Johnny. It's just the sniffles. I suppose I ought to stay in my room all day. Oh, Mother, please... It's New Year's Eve. It's just like any other day as far as I'm concerned. You're both perfectly willing to leave me all alone to wait for the New Year. When it's probably the last New Year I'll ever see. Not that it matters, I suppose. Oh, gee, where's Mother? Now, why do you keep saying things like that? Look, Johnny and I aren't going anywhere. We'll celebrate right here at home. How's that? That's fine. There's fine. nothing in the house to eat. Well, I'll run over to the delicatessen and get some bologna and stuff like that. Mustard, Johnny, and pickles. You yeah. know I yeah. can't eat those things before going to bed. I never did approve of Annie, but I certainly miss her cooking. That doesn't say very much for mine, Mother. Oh, you'll learn, my dear. I won't say anything. I won't say anything. When I was married, all well-brought-up girls knew about cooking. Oh, Mother, please. Why, Jane, what is it? I can't cook. I can't keep house. I don't know how to bring up a baby. Oh, Jane, I don't know don't what do you're this. talking about. Oh, yes, you do. You presented me from the very first moment you saw me. You presented me because you wanted Johnny to marry Eunice Doolittle. I've done nothing of the sort. But they were engaged. I was never engaged to Eunice Doolittle. Not what you'd call engaged, perhaps. Well, and but, even uh, if I were, you shouldn't keep mentioning to Jane. I don't understand why she's so touchy about it. Touchy? That's why you hate me. Jane, stop it. No, let her go on. I know my place here. I'm only a guest, an unwelcome guest. Oh, now, please. Now, what's the matter with you two? Nothing's the matter with me. I never interfere. It's her house. Mother. It's not my house. I'm a stranger around here. Jane, please. Everything I say is wrong. Everything I do is wrong. Just because I happen to mention Eunice Doolittle. Now, stop it, both of you. Very well. I won't say another word. Now, you see what you made me say to Mother? You said it to me, too. Don't I count? Well, sure you do, Jane. Only Mother's an old lady. Why can't you get along with her? Why can't she get along with me? You don't know how it is. You're at the office all day. Between taking care of the baby in the house and listening to her criticize everything, I can't stand it anymore. All right, then. You don't have to. Johnny, where are you going? I'm going out. 
Where, Johnny? I don't know anywhere, as long as I get away from this wrangle. You don't want me to go with you? Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. Really, I am. Well, you don't have to apologize. Would you rather I didn't come with you? All right, Johnny. I don't mind. No, no. Come on. It's all right. You're sure you don't mind? Well, no. Certainly I don't. Come on. Oh, we'll have a good time. You just wait and see. More wine, sir? No. There's nothing the matter with it, sir. No, 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 no. It's fine. Yes, sir. Johnny, what's happened to us? I don't know. Didn't we always promise we'd never keep anything back? Yes. Then why don't you tell me? I've tried to, and it won't come out. What do you want to say? Well, maybe I played you a dirty trick when I took that cinder out of your eye. Did you? Well, you'd never have married me if it hadn't happened. Oh, don't say that, John. All my life, I've, I've run away from things. Well, I'm not going to run away from this. I want to face it. And what have I done up to now? I've been a failure. Oh, John, no, you... No, yes, Jane, I have. I've got nowhere at the office. I'm in debt. Now it looks like my marriage goes on the road. No, Johnny, no. It's been my fault, too. No, no. I've been the one that's made the mess of things. Even my own kid has to sleep in the dining room. I've made a household drudge out of you. Johnny, I love being a household drudge. You're tied down, tied down to the house and baby. Maybe we shouldn't have had him. Johnny, the baby, you're not sorry about him. Crazy about him. Crazy about you, too. I'd die for either one of you, but... No, no, that wouldn't work either. I don't even carry life insurance. Uh, well, let's... Let's be sensible about it, Jay, and I... I'm no good for you. Maybe... Maybe it's the other way around. You were doing fine till I came along. Well, what is it? Do you want a divorce? Well, I, I'm trying to look at it sensibly, that's all, from your viewpoint. I never thought this would be our New Year's. But anyway, we've finally got something to celebrate. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I guess we must be pretty intelligent people to come to a decision like this and be so sensible about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess we must. Everything didn't go wrong, though. We did get a baby out of it. Call up the house and see how the baby is. Well, there's a phone on the lobby. I'll go with you. No, I'll be right there. Jane, let me in. Let me into the booth, Jane. I want to... Jane, listen. Wait. Hello. Go on, Mother. Yes, I'll come. I'll come as fast as I can. Jane, what is it? At the house. Where? All right. What's happened, darling? Johnny. What's the matter? The baby, the baby. What's the matter? They've taken him to the hospital. Something's happened. Oh, hurry, Johnny, hurry. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act three of Made for Each Other, starring James Stewart and Marsha Hunt, will continue in a moment. What are those letters, Libby? Letters from our listeners, Mr. Kennedy. You know, week after week, we tell our millions of friends how wonderful Lux is for stockings. But this week, well, I thought I'd let our friends tell us. Good idea. What do they say? Well, here's a letter from Mrs. Josephine Arthur of Lincoln, Nebraska. She says, I have a pair of rayon hose which I got about six months ago. I've worn them regularly, washing them in Lux Flakes every night, and they haven't a single run. I think Lux Flakes deserves the credit for this long wear. I wouldn't use any other soap for washing my hose. That's very wise of Mrs. Arthur, because strain tests have proved that rubbing with cake soap or using a strong soap makes runs come quickly. Lux cuts down runs over 50%. And listen to this one. Miss Dorothy Fiscus of St. Louis, Missouri writes, I am a hospital technician. Almost a year ago, I purchased three pairs of 45-gauge rayon hose. I have washed them daily, always using Lux Flakes. 
Today, I still have the same three pair of hose, and not one of them has a run. I think that's quite a good record, especially since I'm on my feet all day long. They're extremely interesting letters, Libby, because they bear out exactly what scientific strain tests have proved, that stockings last twice as long, washed with Lux. You can see why so many makers of stockings, over 90% of them, recommend Lux for all kinds of stockings. Miss Fiskus also says, hopefully... Now that the war is over, perhaps I won't have the difficulty I did for a while in getting Lux. We hope so, too, Miss Fiscus. But if your dealer doesn't have Lux the first time you try, try again. More is on the way. You've discovered for yourself Lux is worth waiting for. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We continue with Act Three of Made for Each Other, starring Jimmy Stewart as Johnny and Marsha Hunt as Jane. a few hours have passed, but to Johnny and Jane, they've been eternity. In the waiting room of the hospital, they sit close together, hardly trusting themselves to speak, while just down the hall, their baby fights for life with every breath. At last, the door opens. Dr. Healy? How is he, doctor? Well? Oh, tell us, please. Your baby has pneumonia, type 14. I'm afraid I... Well, I'm afraid I can't give you much hope. It's that bad? Yes. There's a new serum which has worked in cases of this sort, however. The hospital's trying to get it now. Trying to get it? There's none in New York. We've called the laboratories in Salt Lake City for a supply to be sent by air as soon as possible. How soon will it be here? I wish I could say. We've just been advised that a storm's raging out there. No pilot will make the trip tonight. Then we can't get the serum. I'm afraid not in time. However, I'm hoping that... Hoping? Well, that isn't enough. I'll find a pilot. Johnny, we've got to. We've got to. Hello? Hello? Is this the Salt Lake Airport? Well, my name's Mason. I'm in New York City, and my baby has... Oh, oh, you know about it, huh? Well, is the serum at the airport? Well, when can you leave? Tomorrow? No, no, you've got to leave tonight. The baby needs it now. All right. Johnny? Well, he's talking to somebody else. Hello? What? $5,000? Sure, sure, I'll get it. It'll be at Newark Airport waiting for you. Will you, st- will you start right away? Will, will, will you try, will you? Will you try? Okay. Johnny, $5,000? I know, I know, but I'll get it. You stay here, Jane. If I've got to rob a bank, I'll get it. I'm coming through this time. This is an outrage. You don't dare waken Judge Doolittle. Is this his room? Mr. Mason, you must leave immediately. Doolittle, come on, wake up. Mr. Mason, please, he'll be furious. Doolittle, come on, wake up. Mm, uh, 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 who, who is this? That's Mason from the office. I've got to talk to you. Why, you, you must be drunk. I'm not. Now, l- is look, Is this Judge... your way of celebrating the new year? Now, you listen to me. No, you... now, you listen to me for a change. When you asked me to take a cot, I took it, didn't I? And then I had to make my baby sleep in the dining room, and that's why, how he caught his cold. What are you talking about? I'm talking about my baby. He's got pneumonia. And I need $5,000. That's, that's what it'll cost to get the serum from Salt Lake. And you're going to let me have it. My baby's dying. He's dying. Do you understand that? Your, your baby? Well, why didn't you get in touch with me sooner? I, I'm terribly sorry, Miss. I don't, I don't need sympathy. I need serum. Every second counts. All right, Mason. All right, Simon, my checkbook and a pen. Yes, sir. Oh, Judge, thanks. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Hello? Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's the airport. Huh? Okay, put him on. Hey, Conway, it's that bug in New York wants me to fly a plane there. Oh, tell him he's nuts. We couldn't get a ship off the ground. Yeah, and that ain't... Hello? Oh, he- hello there, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mason. Yeah, the serum's here, but it's impossible to take off. What can I do? I know how you feel. I got a... What can you do with a guy like that? Give me that phone. Wait a second, Mr. Mason. Conway will talk to you. Look, Mason, what do you think this is, a suicide club? You can't expect any guy in his right mind to fly a plane on a night like this. But a ship wouldn't stand a chance of getting through. Huh? Oh, now, look. Holy smoke. Now, wait a minute, buddy. Take it easy. Hold on a minute. Hey, Hatton. Yeah? Hatton, look. Let me borrow your plane. Are you crazy? You ought to know how it is. You've got kids of your own. 
I'll give you half the money if you loan me the crate. I suppose you crank it up. Then you can keep the whole five. I won't need it. Okay, Conway, but you're nuts. Hello, Mason. Relax. I'll highball her into New York tomorrow. Jane, has Johnny called yet? Yes. He's waiting at the airport. What did he say? Just that the plane's left Salt Lake. How long will it take to get here? Oh, 14, 15 hours. I don't know. It'll be too late. Shall I get you a coat, dear? The doctor says he's going fast. Here, dear. Put my coat around your shoulders. If my baby dies, I want to die too. Jane, dear, you mustn't feel that way. I can't help it. You mustn't let John know you feel that way. He loves the baby too. As much almost as he loves you. Poor Johnny. He'll be so lonely if if the baby... He'll have you, Jane. And you'll have him. And you can't be lonely, either of you. As long as you have each other. Mother... You know when you're lonely, really lonely, when you've no one to share things with, not even a loss. Mother. That's when you're really lonely. Oh, Mother, I haven't understood. You are lonely, aren't you? (laughs) Oh, Mother. Denver calling Conway. Denver, Colorado calling all stations to Newark. Stand by to try contact NC24. Emergency. Pass contact with Conway in middle of message. Try contacting him and relay all messages to Newark. Denver. Have you have you heard anything more? I tried about an hour ago, Mr. Mason. I'll try Allentown again. They might have heard something. Well, hurry, please. This this waiting is terrible. Yeah. Newark calling Allentown. Do you read me, Allentown? Come in, Newark. What's the latest on Conway and NC24? I haven't heard a thing for eight hours. Did you check Iowa City? Yeah, about ten minutes ago, and they just checked with Omaha. No word of any kind? No, nope, and the things come through. Let me know right away if something does. Okay. That's it, Mr. Mason. Well, do planes go this long unreported? Longer sometimes, Judge Doolittle. Of course, in weather like this. What? Well, maybe his radio went out. That happened. Yes, yes, that's what I think, Johnny. Yeah. You can look at it this way. Stands to reason Conway got out of the low-pressure area when he passed the Rockies. Why, certainly it, it stands to reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been swell, Judge. You too, Murphy, and all the operators and the superintendent, you've all been fine to stay here all these hours, trying to give me hope. But there's no use. I can't just keep calling up the hospital to say that there's no news. It isn't fair. So I, I guess I'll go to her. But but I want to thank you. Thanks a lot. Murphy. Yeah? Murphy, there isn't a chance, is there? Judge, if Conway is still up in that crate, it's a miracle. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh, give, give us this day our daily bread. And... <laughs> I can't. I don't know how. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Oh, Johnny, you've and, come. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Forever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Oh, Johnny, I don't know how. I've forgotten how to pray. Just ask him, darling. He'll know what you want. Oh, dear God. You know, you know how much he means to us. 
we, we've only had him such a little while, and, and we, we, we want to see him grow up to be a man. Oh, please, help our little baby. He's so small, so helpless. Oh, please, please, please. Hello, Newark. Hello, Newark. Hello, Newark. This is Newark. Who are you? Who is it? Hello, Newark. This is Conway from Salt Lake. I'm coming in, Newark. I'm coming in. Jane, Johnny, Jane, my dear. Mother, what is it? Dr. Mason. Healy, is it, is it all over? No, my dear, it isn't all over. The baby's sleeping soundly, normally, for the first time. Johnny. Johnny, did they tell you the news? Conway got through with the serum. What? Judge Doolittle brought it to the hospital himself. The baby's going to get well? We administered the serum as soon as it arrived. He's picked up amazingly. He's going to be well? Oh, Jane. (gasps) Dear God, thank you. Thank you. Mason, come in. Sit down. Yes, sir. Mason, I want to congratulate you on the handling of the Higgins against Higgins case. Yes, sir. Well, but you see, our boat leaves in an hour. Higgins and, and Higgins are so pleased, they've decided on us to settle the second case. A second case? And I'd like to have you try it, my boy. Oh, but Judge Doolittle, I've got reservations. We're sailing this afternoon. Jane and I are going on our honeymoon. Ah, come outside a minute, Mason. But, Judge, Jane I'm and done. I are doing the... Huh? Jane, what are you doing here? Look, Johnny, I brought the baby down to show you. Follow how... me, both of you. Oh, all three of you. But, darling, why did you bring Johnny? We've got to be at the door. Will you stop for a minute? I've got something to tell you about the baby. Here we are. Come over here, Mason. Look. At what? At the door. Look. Read it. On the door, my boy. Well, you just say law officers of Doolittle, Doolittle, Smiley, Hutch, and Car- uh, Carter and Mason. I've given you a partnership, my boy. The partnership? Johnny. And incidentally, you'd better get down to the boat. There's some extra reservations waiting there for you. The bridal suite. Well, well, thanks, Judge. Oh, the baby. I forgot. Johnny, we rushed down the minute it happened. What happened? Is is he all right? Johnny, the baby can talk. Oh, go on. Baby, they don't believe us. Come on, darling. We'll prove it. But he can't talk. Janie's too young. Show them, darling. Come on, dear. Don't be afraid. Now, speak up. Come on. Now, say, Daddy. Say, Daddy. Daddy. Come on, now, please, darling. Say, Daddy. Clap. Well. well, What do you know? I I thought you were kidding. (laughs) Before our stars return for a curtain call... Let's stop in for a moment at the supermarket. Betty Smith is there, scanning the soap shelves. There goes a box of Lux in her cart. Nancy Gray is looking, too, but not where she's going. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Why, Nancy, hello there. I haven't seen you since you got back from your honeymoon. Oh, that was a month ago. How does it feel to be a housewife? Oh, it's fun cooking. But the dishes. I'm not a glamour girl anymore. Mm, You look pretty good to me. It's my hands. Well, they never looked like this when I was pounding a typewriter. Mmm, a bad case of dishpan hands. It makes Jim feel bad because we can't have them made. How do you stand it, Betty? Anything wrong with my hands? Well, no, but... And I wash dishes three times a day. How in the world? Nothing but Lux goes in my dishpan. That strong stuff you have there is swell for some purposes, but not for my hands. Well, I was only trying to watch the pennies. But Lux is thrifty. It makes such rich suds a box lasts much longer. It would fix up those hands of yours in short order. Really? You just take a box and try it. Bet you'll see an improvement in less than a week. Well, sounds easy. It really works. Before you know it, your hands will be just as soft and smooth as ever. Changing to Lux Flakes for dishes is good advice for any housewife who's having trouble with red, rough dishpan hands. Scores of women prove that changing from strong soaps to Lux gets rid of dishpan redness. Budget watchers like it, too. It's been proved that Lux does up to twice as many dishes, ounce for ounce, as any of ten other leading soaps tested. We return you now to William Keeley. 
Once more, the spotlight turns on Jimmy Stewart and Marsha Hunt as they come back to the microphone for a well-deserved curtain call. Thank you, Bill. Jimmy, I understand that as soon as this program is over, you're packing to go home for Christmas. That's right, Bill. Back to Pennsylvania, the town where I was born and raised. How about you, Marsha? What's your hometown? Well, I was born in Chicago and raised in New York. I guess I'm strictly a city girl. Well, I back you both up. I come from Pennsylvania and from a city, Philadelphia. Did you get your start in acting there, Mr. Keeley? Yes, our football team needed uniforms, so we put on a play. I was 16 and played an old man of 60. I must have been pretty awful. <laughs> uh, you started your acting career in high school, didn't you, Jim? That's right, Bill. The senior class presented what they call a comedy each year. Uh, was that pretty high-class humor, Jim? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, as I remember one line in which uh, an old henpeck character says to his wife, he says, uh, Oh, how I miss the old spittoon now that it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, uh... uh... She says... She says, you've always missed it. That's why it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, that answers Marsha's question. <laughs> and a question for you now, Mr. Keeley... What is Lux presenting next week in this theater? <laughs> uh, next Monday night, of course, is Christmas Eve. And since that calls for something rather special, we're presenting David O. Selznick's moving and absorbing drama, I'll Be Seeing You, with two of Hollywood's finest players, Dorothy McGuire and Joseph Cotton. It's the sto touching story of a girl and a soldier, both on furlough for the Christmas holidays whose sudden love is shadowed by a haunting secret, creating one of the screen's most gripping and dramatic situations. Well, it ought to make a great play for you, Bill. Good night. Good night, Good night. and happy holidays. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire in I'll Be Seeing You. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Why isn't soap plentiful now that the war is over? Because soap takes oils, and we're still short of them. Those we used to get from the Pacific still aren't coming in. Now that butter and shortening are no longer rationed, there is less fat than ever for industry. Until we can get more oils and fats from other sources, your government asks you to save every drop of used fats from your kitchen. Saving used fats is just as important now as at any time during the war. More fats for industries will help ease the shortage of fine oils for soaps. Your butcher will actually pay you for the used fats you turn in. Four cents for every pound. Jimmy Stewart will next be seen in the Liberty Films' Frank Capra production, It's a Wonderful Life. Marsha Hunt appeared through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of They Were Expendable. Tonight, the Canadian government pays tribute to the motion picture industry of Hollywood, its studios and stars, for their cooperation in Canada's war financing program throughout nine victory loan drives. At a dinner which is right now being given to leading members of the industry, Canada's ambassador to Washington, the Honorable C.B. Pearson, will express his gratitude and his thoughts for future cooperation in the following words. Your industry, ladies and gentlemen, has as much power as any single agency of man to heal the wounds of war and knit together the pieces of a shattered world. This program is broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear I'll Be Seeing You with Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire. The Spry Treat of the Week. Spry Holiday Magic Spice Cake made lighter, finer, richer the Spry way. Flip the tested Spry recipe from December leading women's magazines. And remember, only Spry all vegetable shortening gives you Spry cake making magic. Get Spry tomorrow. That's S P R Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of I'll Be Seeing You with Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire. And why not tune in a half hour early to hear Joan Davis over most of these stations?
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.